All right, people, welcome to Angela's Caches. I'm finally going forward instead of treading water or, or doing rewind. I've caught up on videos from re-uploading videos from my new channel from about the 4th of August. And I'm going to introduce my audio at this stage, my assistant that um, contacted me early last year and uh, said I'm a subscriber long term. It's take me a year to contact you. Um, I've, I've sold my business. I'm not working at the moment, but I can help with computer skills. Do you need help? So um, Aaron Wilson, this um, wonderful human being, resident in the UK, came on board and I was very protective at the beginning because I know that anybody that associates closely with me gets mercilessly trolled. So I protected Aaron's identity um, and we worked under the radar, like not secretly, we have no secrets, but uh, the amazing thing, and this gives me, you know, it renews my faith, was that um, I've been online years, like from 2008, and um, other than sporadically, because I have ADHD and DID and I'm a survivor and blah, 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 I'm 63, blah, 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 I'm not very good at backing stuff up. And so the thing we went to work on almost immediately was let's back up the work you've done. Not having a clue that my 10 year, 12 year YouTube channel would get nuked and um, 500 videos would go down. And even as recently as five days before the takedown, ostensibly at the hands of Biggie Boho and Mel V of CCN, um, but I suspect there was more to that than met the eye. Five days before Aaron had said to me, okay, I backed up 440, do you want me to back up the unlisted? And I'm like, yeah, okay, please go for it. And five days later, everything was gone. So as some of you know, I lost maybe 10 private videos likely to do with my own personal case, which I've pretty much given up on getting justice for. But the, the good news is we saved 490 plus the backup channel. So I'd just like to introduce myself and Aaron talk about twice a week, maybe once a week sometimes, but the conversations are so profound and so important that we're ready to go to the next level and Aaron's ready to use his voice. Am I allowed to say where you're from? Um, yeah, why not? <laughs> Aaron, Aaron is from Lithuania. How long have you been resident in the UK? Um, almost 11 years now. Okay. Most of the time in London. Yeah, yeah. So this is the guy that has a story. A lot of my subscribers um, have incredible stories. And this is not the connection where we're going to go into that, although I do anticipate documenting not only Aaron's own personal story, but things he observed and cases he followed from Lithuania, um, which are mind blowing. So this is just really to say we're doing a catch up. Um, the thing I wanted to say is that I've re-uploaded from August the 4th, 2020, but there was still about 400 videos to re-upload and my backup channel was getting swamped with re-upload, re-upload, re-upload. And it was very hard to launch a new video in amongst that. So what Aaron has done is set up um, an associate channel called Archives of Truth. And I really would invite you, please, to go over to that channel, subscribe, like, share, set the notifications bell. And if you're able, throw a tip in the jar or a contribution to Aaron's PayPal, um, because he's literally spending hundreds of man hours trying to get the truth about Hampstead, the truth about um, so much, the truth about satanic ritual abuse, 
the truth about child trafficking, the truth about the lies that we live in, the, the culture, uh, you know, the devil is the father of deception, he's the father of lies. And it seems like everywhere we look, especially in mainstream media, and also to some extent now in the alternative media, it's just lie upon lie upon lie. So please subscribe to Archives of Truth. And um, I don't know whether you want to talk about whether are you shadow banned already? Have you put the videos public? I've blogged. Um, the good news is that Aaron's re-uploaded um, the entire cover up of the century book, which is rarely available. And if it is, it's about five hundred dollars by Daniel Ryder. And he's also re-uploaded um, Children for the Devil by Tim Tate, which is also a rare, rare book, a um, couple hundred dollars online. But, you know, I'm, I've done an audio series. It's got my commentary on it, but um, it's almost non-existent to be able to get hold of this. So those two playlists are up. The next playlist being worked on is Hampstead. These are rare interviews that even some of the best researchers and even those on Reddit and 4chan, 8chan, 8kun, blah, 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 they've never come across them. So this is a labor of love and scholar uh, scholarship that Aaron is undertaking. Yeah, talk to us. Talk to us, Aaron. Yes, yeah, so um, I don't know. Uh, Are you experiencing shadow start? banning? Are you experiencing shadow banning or hacking? I know you were horrendously hacked about a month ago, six weeks. Yes, ago. and I know who did it. Yeah, we both do. <laughs> yeah, we both do. Um, but uh, no, it's fine. I, I I have enough measures on my side, so it, it seems to be fine now. I never had a YouTube YouTube channel, nor I was a public figure. It's true. Uh, so uh, there's not much they can do to me, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, hopefully. <laughs> 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 I think the biggest thing is to have faith, because the fear of what can be done is worse than what can be done. I don't fear anything. Yeah, that's if I would, I wouldn't be working with you. So. Yeah, that's what makes us quote unquote dangerous is because it's that old thing of freedom's just another word for nothing left to lose. Now they're painting a whole narrative in America that all these um, quote unquote truthers or even the QAnon people, which I'm not, but like I do see some truth in that in that dissemination. They're now saying these people are domestic terrorists and we need to, you know, flag them as such. I don't know if people know, um, I lost my main YouTube channel with 12 years work, 500 videos. Then I lost my main Facebook profile, which had millions of engagements, 5,000 friends, 2,000 followers, five groups, and just literally millions of engagements. Um, that was taken down. Then my backup Facebook, which was mostly family and close friends, that's the good news is I thought it was gone, but I think it's just a 28 day suspension. Also, Facebook just bought WhatsApp and, oh. <laughs> and, and 11th, 11th of February, they will release the new terms and conditions oh, that my you God. have to agree with. And they, the WhatsApp, your WhatsApp will be merged with Facebook, which, wow. means, which means all your contacts in your phone will be merged with Facebook. They will know who you know and what's on your contacts. And That's the, it's all networking. It's like when I first joined Facebook, it was when my boys were young teenagers and my daughter said to me, Mum, you've got to learn how to go online to monitor teenagers. Back then it was Bebo and things like that. And she's like, Mum, you, you've got to learn to do this because, you know, I was single parenting two boys. And uh, she just said the online thing is just something that parents have to educate themselves about. So she taught me how to fake <laughs> set up. <Yeah. laughs> I don't, I think I, I might, have, I wasn't spying. I said to my boys, 
do you know what? Until you're sort of like really young adults, I'm going to keep an eye on what's going on online. It's too dangerous not to. And they're like, yeah, all right then, yeah, all right, and so on and so mm -hmm. forth. So that's how I started on Facebook. And then I found it strangely healing because I have DID or had, have, you know, dissociative identity disorder from MK Ultra childhood, you know, trauma-based mind control, fracturing of the, the mind. Something about Facebook helped me heal. And, and I'm sorry to speak up for them, but I will at this point. So even things like photos and photo albums and archives, I had been programmed with self-loathing. And when I started to upload photos and, you know, going back decades, I was just like, whoa, whoa. It's like, I thought, I just, I just was full of self-loathing. And as I looked, Outside of myself, I saw that I had been um, not only a model, not only a monarch, not only a, you know, some some degree of sex kitten programming, but not not hugely in that. I don't think I was hugely used for honey trapping and so on. I was more used for spying and um, unwilling asset to intelligence agencies like CIA and MI6, but not knowing, like completely unwitting. But Facebook, with the thing of being able, because the secret of DID, the secret of keeping an asset or an MK Ultra victim asleep is to compartmentalize. So with Facebook, I could compartmentalize, but it was all under my umbrella. So I had my mind control social engineering group. I had my survivors groups. I had my Christian group. I had my photo albums. And I, was, I had a place where I could lay out all the compartmentalized areas of my shattered mind and personality. And it started to help me integrate. It started to, it was amazing. So I, I went through real, grief when Facebook took down my main profile and the reason they used for that they said I had covered I had covered terrorists like Tommy Robinson and Sabine McNeil <laughs> Sabine is 76 she's going to be 77 this year you know she 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 worked at CERN she was closely associated to Belinda McKenzie and, and co MI5 but she also was a campaigner for children. And so one of the reasons cited for taking down my main profile was referencing in videos two or three or four years ago, Sabine McNeil, domestic terrorist. And the other was TR, you know, and I'm not a huge TR follower, but he made some good points. His, his, his documentary, what was it called? Power Drama on the BBC and different works he did, even though I know he's funded and, you know, he's got, you know, he's well looked after, but he spoke a lot of truth. But that was the two reasons they gave for taking down my main Facebook was Sabine McNeil and TR. Um, and, and, then, and then they said, oh, because you've got two profiles, which I never hid. One was Angela Power Disney, 5,000, friends, 2,000 followers, millions of engagements. The other was Angie Power Disney, which originally was for friends and family. So only about 800 followers, really a more intimate experience. And that, so they said, because you've got two profiles, we're taking one down. So which one did they take down? Oh, the big one, you know? And now they've suspended the small one for 28 days. And who knows, that might go too. But look, if... Jeff Bezos on Twitter and Mark Zuckerberg, figurehead of Facebook, can ban the president of the most powerful country in the world, then who am I to complain? They are doing their globalization. So, and uh, we, I use WhatsApp a lot. We have a huge family and uh, all over the world. And we, we, we obviously connect through WhatsApp, we have a family group and 
Yeah. Now, now, when Facebook is trying to steal all your phone contacts. Yeah. By, by buying WhatsApp. Yeah. Obviously, uh, it's. Uh, uh, I am thinking I'm going to go Viber, owned by a Japanese company called Rakuten. And uh, like ages ago, it uh, it became overwhelming in Russia. Actually, uh, it surpassed uh, WhatsApp, Viber. So. Maybe Viber is the solution. There's video as well, and I don't know. We'll see. It, it, it's like chasing. It's like with Greyhound. My father did Greyhound racing for a while, and with Greyhounds, they make a dummy hare run fast ahead of them that they can never catch. I didn't put my earrings on. No, and but it how... me of that because I used Viber briefly, maybe three years ago, but a lot of people. We're using Parler or Parlay, and they don't realize that that's owned by Cambridge Analytica. And Cambridge Analytica is from collects the UK. all of your data. Yeah, Facebook apologize. I've got a screenshot somewhere. Apology but is not accepted because Facebook apologized to me personally, yeah. maybe last year, the year before. Oh, we're so sorry. Accidentally, Cambridge Analytica has. Scraped all your information, all your posts, all your sure. contacts, all your likes, sure. likes, blah blah blah. Um, we're really sorry. We 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 did. We don't know how this happened, right? As if. And so then people were saying everybody that got scraped would get twelve thousand dollars compensation. No it's such thing. Number one, you got number a one. screenshot apology. But yeah. the thing that disturbed me in the last two months was I was told very by a very credible resource, and I can't remember what it was, who it was, but Cambridge Analytica had become so good at profiling people by tracking their likes, dislikes, purchases, website visits, uh, video shares, blah, 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 social media. If somebody with a court case says, right, We've got a court case, we need it to go a certain way. Cambridge Analytica can offer them 30 potential jurors who will all predictably vote the way they want the court case to go. And also the ridiculous, the ridiculous thing in the UK that your Facebook profile, all data on your Facebook profile can be used in, used in court as evidence, yeah, yeah, which is yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. And also, that was with Cambridge Analytica. That was too much, too big to be an accident. It was no. Accident. It's the only video I ever. No accidents when it comes to Facebook. <laughs> it's the only video I ever had banned worldwide within uh, thirty seconds. I made a video about what happened to me with Cambridge Analytica, and within thirty seconds. YouTube said to me, this is banned worldwide. <laughs> yeah. Like, what the fuck? But it, that's how big, that's how important they are. That's and I did manage, I, I did manage to recover a few videos just by using VPN connecting to, I don't know, Ukraine or what. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's not banned, you know, because they're not following up. Yeah. So, the, the Cambridge Analytica video is up on BitChute. And I might even have put it on Vimeo. I got it back up, but I didn't realize how important it was. And I hear really well-educated alternative media newscasters like Ryan Dawson saying, oh, Parler, parlay has gone down and Parler's, you go to Parler. And I'm like, hello, do you know who owns it? Do you know who has the majority shareholding? It's like Facebook Mark II, you know? Yeah, and same with Google and YouTube. It's just absolutely ridiculous when, uh, in such a short period, in such a short period of time, very particular people were blocked, their channels were deleted, and those yeah. very particular people are those who speak uh, against government agenda, yeah. those who expose pedophiles, VIP pedophiles, and Satanists, yeah. VIP Satanists, and masons high level pre-masons yeah they they are all getting you know their channel deleted 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 oh it's unbelievable this is such a clear agenda 
this is in a broad daylight. This is too obvious what's happening here. Yeah, yeah. And the other thing I want to say for a future video, maybe conversation we'll do, is I realized, and this might be off topic, but look, I'm just, I'm finally now able to go forward because I've backed up from August and you're backing up the rest so I can get my brain to go forward again. But the thing that really occurred to me for a future discussion is how MK Ultra assets, of which I count myself as one, Kathy O'Brien, you know, Susan Ford, Bryce Taylor, um, you know, so many that, that, you know, Nina Val, I could list them off, Sandy Bird and Nina Valentine, so many, but we always were left with an Achilles heel. And I don't know if this is deliberate or not, but it's this inability to have, I don't know if it's because if you get trauma-based mind control in childhood, you get arrested development. So therefore you can't have a relationship in an adult way. You're still a teenager or a seven-year-old or a three-year-old, whatever age the biggest splitting went on. But I've been courted um, and groomed by the Illuminati, you know, the predatory class, the predator class, or those that were still programmed for more than a decade including like being invited to Texas and Palm Springs and Vienna and London and here, there and everywhere, party, Rothschild parties, blah, blah, blah. But they always were trying to seduce me and entice me and lure me back in. And even, I'm even realizing that some people I thought were absolute truthers um, are probably still in the cult and were trying to pull me back into line. And the, the Achilles heel I see is that these high level monarchs, really, really, really high level monarchs, um, unless they were married and have stability, like let's assume Virginia Gouffre or Fiona Barnett, I believe is happily married or certain of them have managed to escape this noose and be in a stable relationship. Even Kathy O'Brien, although I think still think Mark Phillips was her handler, but she was in love. But I think the ones that are left out in the cold, including myself, are our Achilles heel, is we can still be groomed by um, assets, you know. So I think of, uh, I remember Lady MJ Santos, she's a billionaireess. She's part of the predator class. And I remember her engaging with me, thinking I was still programmed and still able to be put back in, in action. And she would give me trigger words and trigger words and they weren't working. But the reason I got into close communication with her was because despite being a billionaireess and part of the predator class, she was crushing over a guy that was so narcissistic and so never gonna meet her needs. It was pathetic. It was heartbreaking. And I will go ahead and say this as well. I will, I'm gonna be dangerous. Christine Ann Sands, of whom I am fond and who I thought was a fellow campaigner, her crush, on Julian Assange, never having met him, is, is that's the essence of what I'm talking about of high level assets, MK Ultra assets that are left, it's almost like a back door. It's almost like we're left so vulnerable. I did the same with Rupert Quaintance, 22 years younger than me. I got honey trapped by him, his cousin, works for Mitch McConnell. You know, his father services or service the computers of Langley. He, he's so deep state or his family is so deep state. The finders were based in his small town, you know? So I can't remember the name, it always goes out of my head. But, but that's the Achilles heel. And for Christine Ann Sands, she spent six months in Ecuador 
you know, pleading with the government there, please keep him safe, please keep him safe. She traveled to the UK and Europe in, a, a, you know, I don't know, 35 foot RV, a non-mobile. She's put her life on the line over and over. She asserts that his latest partner, alleged mother of his two sons is a fake and it's all a fake. She went crazy at Pamela Anderson and she's shown herself very capable. She's hacked people at a very high level. She's regard, you know, she's the darling of the FBI and certain sections of Anonymous. But my heart breaks because as a fellow MK Ultra asset unawares, I see that vulnerability. So I don't know. You don't have to comment on that, but if you want to. And we and we 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 are talking. You are talking uh, from your experience. Which yeah. Is the UK, UK, Ireland, UK, Ireland, America, Scotland. We know what's happening in Australia. It's a nightmare over there. Absolutely. But, but, but I want to highlight one point here as well. It is everywhere. It is in Lithuania. It is in Russia. It, it, it was in Soviet um, Union. MK, they used MK Ultra in Soviet Union to, to uh, prepare their secret agents for particular jobs and stuff like that. It, and also there was this case since 2008, it's still ongoing, where this little girl was, um, I don't know how to call it, prostituted because they were taking money to give that child to high level prosecutors, judges, politicians, also high level people from Russia were coming to Lithuania and they were just giving that child to all of them until the father in 2000, 2008 made it all public and started calling all names. So then, and his sister, so the auntie to the girl, she is a judge. So she started helping the brother and she got in prison. She escaped to the United States. Now she, now she is, she's back in Lithuania under house arrest, uh, living with her parents. And it started in 2008, how many years? Now I've contacted her son who lives in Chicago now. Uh, I want to publish all of that okay. with him together. Okay. And uh, I just recently, a couple of days ago, contacted him to wait okay. for response because he's, he's a big fighter for the, his mom now because the, the father of the girl is dead because when, when he saw no justice coming, uh, he went and killed the prosecutor or judge and, uh, and three, day, the, three days later, he was found dead, drowned in a puddle. In a puddle. It's was dr drunk, to, drunk to death, drowned in a puddle. At the lake, without a car or nothing. Well, he, did he walk there? But a, where, where was this? That's in Lithuania. Wow. So this, these pedophiles, these pedophiles, VIP pedophiles we are talking about, they're everywhere and they're doing exactly the same thing in every single country of the world. Yeah. What is, they are stealing children from Africa. Yeah. They, they're, they're doing everything everywhere. It's a playbook. It's a playbook. It's, it's a, in a broad daylight. Yeah. And we sort of are not allowed to talk about it when it's bloody clear and obvious what's going on. I know. I know. Look, I'm so happy we've gone public to some extent. We've gone audio public. And I pray against any hacking or any malice. And Christine and Sands, you know, I, I class you up there with Kathy O'Brien and Bryce Taylor and so many others. You know, dare I say Isaac Cappy, Fiona Barnett, David Shirt, and myself. So many others, Jesse, I don't know how to say her name, but I mean you no harm, but sweetheart, I don't know, I, I, I don't know. When, when Christine gets angry with Julian, she says he's CIA, you know, and then she's back in love with him and so on and so forth. I was listening to 
there's a defector from Cicada 3301, which was involved with the recent resurgence of the 17th letter of the alphabet since about 2017. But there's a defector called Lestat or Arturo. And although I don't agree with everything he says, but his research is brilliant. And he talks about how it all evolved. And um, so the Conspiracy Distillery is his channel. And I don't agree with his conclusions, but his research is superb. So Christine, we're not your enemies. We're not your enemies. We're really not, we're not. And, um, you know, I, I hear, how do you feel? We'll just finish on this because I don't want this be, to be too long. I'm watching people like Robert David Steele, Simon Parks and Charlie Bird being held up as international authorities on the truth. You could add in Sasha Stone and all these people. But because I've been working in this field for more than 12 years consciously, I, I know their backgrounds. Like Simon Parks is, is, he was an MP in the UK, but he's like a UFO crazy person. You know, like we've got Robert David Steele saying there's child slaves on Mars. We've got Simon Parks saying aliens, you know, come in his bedroom regularly. I, I believe they're demons and demonic entities manifesting. And then we've got Charlie Bird you know, it's just what crazy times are we living in, Aaron? Yeah, it's, um, I mean, the extent is absolutely immeasurable. And what the, it, it does feel to a lot of people that there's nothing we can do anymore. But there is, I mean, yeah. the, the only way is just go as public as you can with yeah. every name. Go public. And this is what I recommend um to all survivors take it back to the microcosm i have people contacting me and i have probably for every one survivor that i interview i have 30 that ask me to interview them some of them i think are too vulnerable because anybody i interview gets trolled by hoaxstead research or the 77th brigade or you know who knows any international um trolling outfit so some of them I just don't feel it's like I know you think you can just talk to me and everything will be fine but you know yourself Aaron from yeah. you taking a year to say I want to work with you even you were shocked at the level of attack you came under yes and, and it didn't take long it only it was only a few months, months we've been working yeah, together five and months, yeah and uh, yeah so uh, I've been I was well into into what's going on and uh, I, I was not only your subscriber that whoever talks about it and I followed Fiona Barnett I think I've seen every single video that was featuring Fiona Barnett or even released by herself and you know I, it was mind-blowing and obviously it reminded me the case in Lithuania since 2008 it's still ongoing we have to do a show about that we absolutely I'd like you to get some screenshots, screenshots, I will. documents. I will. Let's yeah. schedule a show about that because that's huge. And it shows that this is worldwide. This is not just the UK. It's not just the Five Eyes countries, America, Canada, New Zealand, Australia. It's not, it's worldwide. It's mind blowing. It's, uh, you can't escape it. Look, I've lived in Spain I live in the UK now. Where did you live in Spain? Where did in, you Den in Denia, not far from Alicante at Benidorm. Oh, wow. Wow. I went to Orgiva. Have you ever heard of Orgiva? It's, uh, it's probably an hour, hour and a half from Alicante. It's near the Portuguese border. Anyway, never mind. Never mind. Yeah, but no, I didn't go to the, the west side of Spain. But... How long did you live in Spain? For half a year, but Six half months. a year, but yeah, but I, I actually came back to Lithuania screaming because, oh God, they love for foreigners' money, but they hate foreigners. It, it was a very nasty experience. I got oh. beaten, I got beaten up 
for being a foreigner there. But anyway, oh. I did meet some lovely people over there, but oh. they were not Spanish. <laughs> I always made the effort, whenever I lived in Europe, I lived in Spain twice, I always made the effort to learn Spanish and speak Spanish. And, you know, um, I, I, I always feel as a traveler that if you go to a, a host country, a guest, you know, as a guest, you should make some effort. So like when I went to Lanzarote, I, I learned flamenco and I learned, um, Spanish, yeah. you know, more Spanish and, you know, different countries, I, I always make the effort to try and, uh, you know, just like not say, you know, I, I have a right to be in your country as much as you do. I always make the effort to say I'm a guest here and I'm very appreciative. Yeah, that's I'm exactly. Sad that, I'm sad that the Spanish were not hospitable to you. That makes me sad. And uh, yes, yeah, so I went to Spain. I only knew Ola, Ola and nothing else. I didn't, I didn't speak Spanish at all. So it took me three months. In three months, I was speaking quite good Spanish. So, wow. but be because it's because it's near Valencia, yeah. And I'm working with clients. So clients now I speak good Spanish. Now they want me to speak Valenciano. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, because I uh, live in Andalusia, I mean, and and so it's very. So different. I said. So I said to one lady, darling, I said. How many languages do you speak? One. And it is Spanish. She said, no, I speak two. I speak Spanish and Valenciano. Well, this is Spanish, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, well, I speak four languages. So when I, yeah, when I, learn, when I learn a fifth one, yeah, no, yeah. I, will, I will learn a fifth I'll one. You know. I'll learn a second one. Yeah? yeah, yeah, yeah. I lived in Gibraltar for three years when I was five. And Gibraltarian Spanish is completely different from Andalus Andalusian Spanish from Valencia, but it all gets very tribal. But look, let's keep it short for this time. Yeah, um, I think we've made um, a breakthrough by uh, connecting like this publicly. And let's do yeah. this. Let's do. Is there anything else I haven't covered? Is there anything important? I want to promote your channel, Archives of Truth, and I will put the link in the description box and i'm very grateful yes at the moment at the moment mostly it is the videos that you've lost when they blocked your main yeah, youtube channel yeah 400 plus yeah. and that will be a little bit that will take a long time yeah. a lot of work to upload all of them yeah but i am determined and uh we are getting somewhere here yeah and we will put things up we will like somebody gave me a hard time recently because we featured a video on BitChute and my bad, I didn't put the original link. But the truth is it was a valuable Intel drop. It wasn't my work, but occasionally I know like, wow, download that quick, it's gonna disappear or it's gonna get flipped up. And so, it does disappear and it does disappear, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, so people, this is Aaron. I'm delighted to introduce you to him. I do feel the hand of God that uh, only eight months, nine months ago, this subscriber stepped up. And if he hadn't, 12 years work of mine was gone. So please pray that my second Facebook doesn't get nuked, although, you know, Mark Zuckerberg should really be arrested socially. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Eric Schmidt, I mean, they should. But, they but should, man. They he, should. he committed enough crimes already oh against humanity. Oh my god! Oh my god! But look, look keep praying, people. Um, there's going to be some fireworks in the next eight days, and I don't mean that in any domestic terrorist kind of way. It's like to tell the truth is a revolutionary act. So. That's it. Thank you so much, Alan. Yeah. Thank you. All right. God bless. And feel free to publish this as well. Sure. All right. God bless.